Well, hello and welcome back to uh, the Workforce Whisperers with Ebony and Lauren. And Ebony hates my little shh, but I, she's gonna. Yeah, it's it's catching. We're making waves. <laughs> so uh, this one is uh, something that has come up for me many times in my professional career, and it came up during one of my coaching sessions. And I would love to get your take on this. Uh, oh. Yes, you're like, oh no, what are we getting into? Okay, are you ready for it? Not really, but go ahead. All right, here's the title. Asked to lunch by an older male as a young woman. So I'm the young woman. Yes, Ebony, I'm young. I am a young woman in an ad agency who has a lot of old male superiors. A nicer one asked me to lunch, and I said yes, since we have things in common outside of discussing work. I want to make sure I'm being cautious here, though, because what if this older man comes off creepy to me during the lunch? Has anyone here been in a young woman, older man situation at lunch? Is it weird or normal? This man hasn't given me those creeper vibes, but is there a way to know for sure? Uh oh, the silence is deafening. <laughs> well, let me put a pinhole in your hubris. He just may be a coworker who wants to get to know you. Okay. <laughs> Not every person who asks you to lunch has ulterior motives. And so let's start there. She said he's not giving her vibes. He mm. just met another coworker. Where are you going? When's the lunch? How was the approach? Right. There's a lot of things that we don't know. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I would say is sometimes people at work are looking to expand their network. Maybe because you're the young woman in the office, he wants somebody who can help him tap into Generation Z on an account that he has. And he's looking to become friends with you so that he can also tap into your expertise because there's a generational mindset you're bringing that he may be trying to market to that he doesn't quite understand. Two, it could be creepy. And you know, Mr. Creepers happens. How, what are the best things for you to say? One, do you have to go out to lunch? Can you just eat lunch in the office in a break room, um, in a conference room if you want to de-escalate and just say, hey, why don't we just order lunch in um, and get it delivered? Or why don't, why don't you bring your lunch on Wednesday? I'll bring mine. And then that way we can have a conference room. And really, if we need anything to brainstorm, anything that may come up, we have facilities. But then you also have that glass wall in the conference room or the break room so that there's also that opportunity for you to be in public and also for you to feel a little bit, bit safer in how you're moving forward. So um, yeah, and then also the coach opinion. Yeah, I, I love that suggestion. What came up for me is the optics. So whether or not there's creepy vibes, when you are seen walking out and walking into the office with a coworker, whether they're older, your age, it creates an imprint of the dynamic. So what I would be looking into is, is there any favoritism that might be coming out of this? Is there any dynamic that could be a negative repercussion? Because that is totally possible. And the what, what stuck out for me is the fact that you know that you have things in common means that there's been some sort of exchange inside the office without going to lunch. So there already is some camaraderie. What I think you have to be aware of is where are the boundary lines potentially getting blurred from coworker to friend to whatever else it could be. And I think the biggest thing to focus on is you can absolutely be friendly but I am a stickler for not becoming friends with people at work until you have left the company, unless you are of the same gender and of the same role because of all of the murkiness that can happen. And obviously if they're same sex relationships and things like office romance is just messy, whether there's like feelings or not feelings, like it's just, it's messy. So my thing is be aware, be clear on your intention of the dynamic and then create optics that support that intention. So eating in the office, inviting another colleague, having something that's more structured around a work-friendly exchange network building. See, I worked in an industry that was male dominated where I was often the youngest person, the only woman, the only person of color. Frequently, I would go out to lunch, dinner, drinks, whatever, golfing, with male colleagues, with male customers, with male coworkers, with male partners. Mm -hmm. 
I am not not viewing it the same way that you are yeah. because that was a part of the role that I had. And quite often I would have friendly relationships with people at work, right? We talk about what our weekends are. We would, you know, go grab lunch once or twice a month. And it was just that. It was like, oh, this is my network of people in the office. Mm -hmm. We would exchange gossip. We both like Thai. And then we would go on about our day because I was like, oh, I want the Thai special, right? And they're like, hey, special sounds great. Or we should do this, right? And so I would do that with regardless of gender, regardless of age, quite often. And I think it's okay to normalize having a friendly work relationship as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had coworkers where that was the person that I needed that I want, I would go talk to when I just wanted a break from my job, but it was still still sort of work related. Mm -hmm. I had various relationships in the office, or it was the person that like, we would take turns going to picking up empanadas and bringing each other one or two. And that was the extent of, you know, the conversation that we would have. So empanadas and chicharroni heavily in my life i'm sorry i don't know why it's because i live in a a tropical place Um, i got it i got it yeah i think i think this is the difference of like working in healthy environments and the experiences you have like working in association management i i think literally on a monthly basis i was sexually harassed and like by my boss and by like i was invited to dinners because i was seen as the arm candy because i started my career at 22 and so there was always this kind of weird energy that I had to be aware of. And I wish I didn't have to experience that. Um, but I think that this is one of those like past things that absolutely, um, influences the lens that I see these situations from in the same way that you have a totally different take on it. And my guess is that this person's question, they may have had a past experience that they're even thinking, could this guy be coming on to me? And so, so even having that past experience kind of keys us up at risk. Like we have our spidey senses lifted to it. So I think trust your gut, um, and shape the dynamic in the direction you want it to go in. And if it doesn't feel like it's working in that way, realign or shift it, you have choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you're hundred percent right. And look, I started my career in construction. I, I I've been blessed. I have blocked as, I don't know, my, my nickname was the ice queen. Oh, I, I mean, nobody fucks with you. I mean, let's just be real. I think it actually was, but um, <laughs> those are not dynamics that I literally had to, to go through. And I've always had amazing relationships with male coworkers who've been like kind mentors, advisors without anything else shady going on. Um, and so I think there's two, there's ends of the spectrum and we both had experiences at both ends, right? And so, yeah, I, if you're, I agree with you, if your gut is telling you something or your spidey senses are going off, then do that, figure out how you want to shape your relationship. But also sometimes people just want your perspective. Sure. Yeah. I think that's it. Trust your gut and be curious Mm -hmm. and keep yourself safe physically and psychologically. Amen. Hey, man. Well, th- this is not where I thought we were going today on this, but uh, I'm glad that we had this conversation because it's it's really amazing to have differing perspectives on this and different experiences, because I think women are told like, never do this thing and always do this. And if we're loaded up with fear, it's actually blocking us off from potential sponsorship and allyship to help us, us grow our career. So, you know, we, we kind of got to heal and move forward uh, at the same time. And by the way, I was the person who would ask people to lunch quite often because I was a senior person and maybe there was a new team member who was like more junior on a team that was supporting me. And I'd known, I knew other people on the team. I'd be like, oh, you know, why don't we all go to lunch and, you know, or I'm going to bring lunch in, let's all go hang out and do this. And that was just one of the ways for me to get to know them because I'm like somebody, they got a new superpower on this team. Let me figure out how I can optimize it for my team so that we can get the most out of that relationship. And, you know, for a couple of those people, um, one I can think about in particular, after that, I was like, well, what do you want to do with your career? For me, it then turned into, let me figure out how I can do a little bit of mentorship and sponsorship. And I started inviting her on like business trips. I was like, you can present, you know, you do business analytics, you can present with me. And it really turned into something that was great that had happened also earlier in my career with someone who was on the college rotation program. I 
they understood the technology behind the system that I use, but they didn't know the job. And so I needed vacation coverage. Let me be honest. I needed vacation coverage and I needed training coverage because I wanted to go take a two-week training class. And my boss was like, found one of your coworkers who's willing to do your job for two weeks. I had one of those jobs that had to be done every day and it came with 24-hour call. And so we all would do people's vacations, but like, girl, you've been out of the office too much. You need to sit down. I was like, no, I need to leave. I want to go to this class. And so I found someone in our college rotational program um, that I was friendly with. And I asked her, I'm like, would you be open to taking a rotation and covering my job? And she said to me, yes, but I don't think they would let me. I said, oh, they'll let you because I, I want to go. And I got a bunch of times I'm going to be out of office in the next three months for about six weeks in total for internal training, for vacation, for whatever. I talked to my boss about it. He said, yes, I trained her up. She became permanent vacation coverage that summer for everybody on our team. She then got a massive upskilling and reskilling. And when I left, she got my role. Mom. Right. And so I say that to say it may not be applied to this situation, but in some situations, that is how it can work out. And so, and honestly, I just liked her. She was another woman of color. Um, there weren't a lot of us, and she was nice and she was kind. And I didn't know the technology and the system very well. And she would always help me out without judging me. And so I was like, what DOS-based system are we still working on? Windows was alive then, but that we were still on a DOS system. And I was like, I don't know DOS. I only know Windows. I was happy to do Help me. And she would help me out all the time because she was a computer information systems major. And so it really helped me out as a rotational person. And so that's how our connection and relationship developed. Um, and I know she'll listen to this. And hi, you know what I always say about you. I, 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 I own her wedding. Nice. Rule of thumb, be nice and kind and grab onto those opportunities when they arise. Absolutely. If I hadn't been curious and if she wasn't willing, who knows where we would both who be? knows? Well, I didn't know where we were going with this and I'm glad that we ended up here. And uh, thanks for checking out this this edition of the Workforce Whispers with Lauren and Ebony. And if you have a question, comment, situation that you want us to dive into and add a little little coach, a lot of sass, and a hell of a lot of snark, uh, let us know and we'll see you all next time.